Hi. Green construction is low cost construction. You may be surprised that I'm telling you this. Let me walk you through with some of our examples. These are things that we have done ourselves in the past about a few years and I'll walk you through each one of it and I'll tell you how we cut down the cost of construction and make it affordable for even a common man to own a green, sustainable home. First and foremost, overall our experience has been that when we go completely sustainable on buildings, the cost of construction comes down anywhere between 15% to 30% on square foot basis. Now, how do we achieve that? Number one, not in the order of priority, but you know, just to walk you through a few dimensions. One, the cost of power. In large projects, like the one we are doing in Sheltrix, Karjat for instance, there are 14,000 homes, anywhere between 12,000 to 14,000 homes. Now, Typically, if you go to an electrical consultant, the consultant will suggest that let's do a 3 kilowatt or a 3 kVA or a 4 kVA, 5 kVA per home. But those are thumb rules that have existed for the last 5, 50 years or 30 years or 40 years. We need to understand at a time when these thumb rules got evolved, the systems that people used inside the homes were totally different. For instance, people used high energy intensity equipments such as heaters and you know, 120 watts fan or um, 100 watts uh, incandescent bulb or even 60 watts or 40 watts incandescent bulb. Those were more of a heater than of a light emitting systems. Now today we are talking about LEDs, we are talking about CFRs. Even a security guard in my building knows the importance of using a CFR. He does not buy the incandescent bulb anymore because he knows the payback period for an incandescent bulb versus a CFR bulb is around um, one and a half, two years at best. And he knows that he can you know, save a lot of money in the process. Uh, that's common sense today, it's, it's prevalent across the country. Now, why do we design assuming old systems in modern homes? So if you are able to cut down on the entire cabling, the copper, the transformers and so on and so forth by reducing the demand load per home, air conditioning for, for instance, let's just assume that people are going to have air condition in a city like Bombay, you know, where there is humidity is pretty high and therefore people need some kind of a system to remove the humidity. The temperature may not be very high during the course of the, uh, most of the time, you know, during the day or the night. Uh, of course, about three, four months it's going to be pretty hot. But rest of the time, you don't need air conditioning in a city like Mumbai. But the problem is the humidity. Because of the humidity, you perspire a lot. Perspiration makes you think that you need air conditioning and the temperature is very high. Now, we can cut down on the demand for air conditioning by designing homes where there is enough cross ventilation. If we study the orientation of the building, if we study the wind pattern, if we study the uh, sun paths, we may be able to design homes with proper fenestrations, the doors, the windows and the ventilators in such a way that any time during the year there is enough cross ventilation coming within the building and that will bring down the demand for air conditioning. Air conditioning by itself has become a lot more efficient in terms of energy nowadays. It used to be around 1.5 kilowatts, 1 kilowatt per ton of air conditioning. Now you're talking about 250 watts, you're talking about 300 watts, 400 watt system, I'm talking about DC compressors and so on and so forth. Um, the inverter ACs that you're talking about. Clearly we can see that these reduces the overall connected load for a home. So if you're able to look at just power alone, you can bring down huge amount of money, about 30% to 40% of your total cost on energy, um, capital cost can come down if you are able to value engineer these power engineering in a building. Let's talk about structures for a second. Now do you know that most structures that have been designed, that are being designed even today in India are based on thumb rules which are 50 years old? Why do we create such buildings? 
why do we need so much of steel and cement and concrete that's because there was a point of time where the dead load of the building was based on certain old structural elements say bricks and say the kind of uh, uh, stones and other things that are available today you are talking about lightweight concrete bricks you are talking about lightweight concrete blocks you are talking about uh, various other lightweight items using recycled materials and so on and so forth uh, which are much stronger in terms of uh, strength and much lighter maybe 30% uh, of that of the conventional uh, building blocks now if you take the load of the building it has come down by about 40 to 50 percent so why do we need to put the same amount of steel and cement and concrete and the kind of columns and pillars and beams that we do uh, that we have been doing for 40 50 years or 30 years even today it's not required we can certainly engineer and bring down and still meet some of the world's best structural standards we can definitely meet the national building code there's no doubt about it and the buildings will last because they are strong they are mightier they are better they are healthier they are cheaper if only you know how to actually calculate these dead loads which i think is is a significant colossal waste today in a building and we can suddenly bring that down <coughs> now there are many things that we can do to reduce the cost of finishing for instance plastering it's not required to do plastering for certain areas um, definitely for instance if you are able to finish the block work very neatly inside let's say a living room that itself will look like art there is no need for us to plaster it and then paint it and then do several coatings of it finishing and polishing and so on and so forth that'll bring down the cost of finishing now we could also bring down the cost of roof by using simple technology like a filler slab technology uh, there are many such technologies that are available that we have done in the past which can bring down the cost of the roof you don't need such thick heavy roof on top of your head it's enough for you to do it in such a way that there is minimum steel and concrete used but gives you the same assurance of a regular conventional building and this can be tested through labs across the country particularly labs in a place like indian institute of science which is a partner for us we work with them very closely we have seen that these costs have significantly come down while not compromising on the quality of the construction or the quality of the home that we give to the customers now another significant dimension of cost cutting is the use of local materials if we are able to use materials for instance there are enough boulders that are available rocks that are available in many parts of the country say in coimbatore or in kurjat and kasara or in chennai and so on and so forth uh, take for instance anything that spans from andhra down to um, parts of tamil nadu we are sitting on one of the largest granite rock bed on in the world um, it's a plateau it's about goes raises about about kilometer above the sea level and it's full of full of uh, granite now these are things that are cut and made slabs into and being exported and sold and so on and so forth but there are quite a lot of waste materials that come out of it and these are rocks these are things that need not be thrown as waste we can use them to construct our buildings we can use them to process them into blocks into walls into panels and we can start using them in our buildings and that will certainly bring down your aggregate cost and these are the dimensions by which you can bring down the cost of various elements in the building and last but not the least do you know that the foundation of your home is very heavily over engineered it is not required to have such heavy you know engineered foundation we can bring down that cost too so these are the techniques by which we bring down the cost of construction of a building which is why i am super confident at idin lab architect that we can bring down the cost of construction and make green affordable on any project anywhere in india perhaps anywhere in the world too If you would like to learn more about this do write back to me at murali@brickegel.com I'll be happy to share with you many of these techniques that we are use across the country to help customers save money in the end thank you very much